Good morning, students, and welcome back to class. And also, welcome to all of you joining us from the virtual classroom today. I'm RetroTech Chris, and I'll be your instructor. To get started, let's go ahead and get logged into the system using our initials. And as always, we're going to be using the IBM Classroom LAN Administration System to conduct our exercises today. Hey, how did you guys get the system administrator password? That's against the rules. You and you to the principal's office right away. So as you might have guessed from the intro there, today we're going to be having a look at the IBM Classroom LAN Administration System version 1.30. And this is actually a system that I hold near and dear to my heart. You see, growing up in high school, we had a network full of IBM PS2 systems that looked exactly like this. And somewhere in the back of my head, I still have that remembrance of the sound of 30 plus Model M keyboards typing away. And as it ends up, during my high school years, I actually did the administration of these systems, so I learned a lot about them. So setting this up in a modern era was really something that was eye-opening to me as I recalled what I had to do back in the day to get this to work. And it's not easy. So reliving that history and setting up the system was a lot of fun. I had to remember all of the different options that you could set to get things configured, including installing Novell Netware and then the IBM Classroom LAN administration system. So today I'm going to take you on a tour of this, and to spare you all of the scrolling lines, we'll do this in the virtual system. So I'm going to hand it over to Virtual Chris to take us on a little tour. Meanwhile, I think I'm going to update the system administrator password. So as we turn virtually here, we can see that I've actually got a three-node system set up. The top right corner, top right window is NetWare version 3.12. That's our server, and this is actually the server that was serving the PCs that you saw earlier in the live clip. The left side of the screen, I've got a virtual client that is booted up uh, to Novell, and we just need to run the Classroom LAN administration program. And the bottom right, we have a client that's already uh, set up and running the Classroom LAN administration system program. So uh, just a note, the network server in the top right is running the monitor program. I can actually exit out of it and you get your traditional Novell prompt. And if I say to load monitor, it will load up the monitoring program. Now, the screen on the left here, you can see that it's showing us an F colon slash login prompt. This is what we see when we boot up a Novell client. And you can also see I've set some environment variables, principally for the IBM Classroom LAN administration system, that V variable at the bottom you see here needs to be set to some sort of path so that temporary files can be stored during execution of iClass. Okay, so to start iClass, you just type G and press enter, and then you get this nice IBM login screen. So with that, let me go ahead and get this client on the right logged in. I'll just use the system operator, and we'll go ahead and do the same for this other one. I'll make it full screen so we can see what's going on, and let's pop on in. Since we do have a fresh installation of iClass here, we don't have any users in the system other than the guest user that comes in the system and our administrator users. And we also don't have any programs installed. So I'll take you through some of the workflows. I'll also leave a lot for you to explore. Let's go ahead and add some users. And I think we're going to need a teacher. And I'll just say teacher, teacher, T, and a user type of T for teacher and we won't put in a password or a grade. I think we can get away with that. And this is the first error I have been having, something with passwords. I don't know why, but I haven't looked into it. It doesn't prevent creation of the user, however. So that user has been created. Let's also create a student. We'll call it student, student S of type S, and we'll put this student in 12th grade, F10. And then for a password option, we'll say N, and it'll complain once again, and we can move on. Cool. So from here, you could actually print a list of user IDs that you added. We won't do that. Excellent. From there, we can actually go and list the users. And if we press F10, we can see we have an admin, we have a guest, a student, and a teacher. So there you have it. Cool. 
So with a teacher and student added, let's go and install some programs. And you can install either programs or you can install Office applications. Since this system was also intended to be used by Office administrators, we're going to install courseware or programs. And quite frankly, whereas IBM had a variety of programs bundled, I always found on the network I administered that we used our own custom programs, for example, WordPerfect 5.1. If we press the insert key and then press it again, we can choose a location to install files from. I happen to have copied WordPerfect 5.1 to this guest client, so we can enter that as a directory and press F10. And then from there, insert the program disk into drive C. Okay, press any key. We can describe this program. We can give some startup instructions, which we actually, for WordPerfect, have to specify a network type and a user ID. If we do that, that will ensure that we can run multiple copies of 5.1 at the same time. Install to the sys volume, which is a Novell volume. And let's go ahead and put it in its own directory. And we'll say that we have 10 licenses. This allows iClass to limit the number of users of a program to keep you within your licensing bounds. So with that, we can hit F10 to save and F10 to confirm. It'll copy all of the files. It says more diskettes. We'll say no. As you will see, you can actually just specify a directory on a hard drive like I did to pull in files, but it will still ask you for diskettes. We'll just say N and that program is installed. Let's install one more. And that program is going to be Deskmate. Why not? So I have that on my drive C as well. We'll go ahead and hit F10. Insert our program disk into drive C, right? And we'll just call this desk, deskmate. And to start it, I think it's just desk. And we'll put this under the courses desk directory. And we'll say that we have just one license for this so we can see that in action. Go ahead and save it. Copies everything over. We'll say no for more diskettes. And now we have two programs installed. Excellent. So with this, I think it's time to actually set up a classroom, if you will. So let's go ahead and log out. And I'm going to log in as the teacher. And as the teacher, you can add or remove a class. And I'll just call this class typing. And it'll say allow students to send messages in this class. Sure. And from there, we will add the class. And let's hit escape. And we have our typing class. Now. We can enter on that, and we can add and remove programs to the typing class. Let's go ahead and add both Deskmate and WordPerfect by pressing the Insert key, followed by F10. And we'll say that we don't want logging for these applications. And from there, those programs are now available within this class. But what's a class without students? So from here, we can add our students, and it gives us the option. So we'll press F10, and we'll just select our student student hit the insert key, hit F10, and that student has been added to the class. Excellent. So another thing the teacher can do is actually use the student menu. So this is what the students would look like when they come into the class. Let's go ahead and launch Deskmate. And there you have it, Deskmate has launched. From there we can exit. And let's launch WordPerfect. And WordPerfect has launched. So let's go ahead and exit out of WordPerfect for the teacher. And I'll go ahead and launch Deskmate. And I'm now going to take this window and put it off to the side. Oh, hey, look. Look at the nice uh, screensaver running on the Novell server. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's take our second session here. And let's go ahead and log in as the student. And we now see we have a typing menu as well, since that's the class we're in. And let's try to launch Deskmate. And whoa, the course is not available because we have maxed out on licenses. So that's where that license limit comes into play. We can go ahead and launch WordPerfect, though. And the student is now in WordPerfect. So that's good. Excellent. So at this point, I'm going to log out as the student. And we'll go ahead and log in as the sysop. And we can demonstrate some more features. One cool feature is you can send a note to all workstations. Hello. And we can see that that note has been sent to our workstation. And if we pop over to Deskmate, it looks like it didn't work. But if we were to exit out, 
you can now see the message. So that's something to keep in mind that I guess in certain modes you won't see it, but we can now see that that message has been sent and you can see it there. Cool. All right, so back over to our sysop session here. You can see we have some other options like we can modify installed programs and this looks a lot like what you saw before. So if for some reason we wanted to change the way that WordPerfect worked, we could come in here and make some changes. Maybe the startup parameters were wrong, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe we need to change the number of licenses. That can all be changed. You can also uh, install program updates and add special menu items as well. Let's have a look at this where we can install the infamous network game of the day. If we click the insert key, we can install the network game for color monitor. I'll hit F10 to add highlighted there. And we'll say no to a change install options. And now that's installed. And let's go back just for a second because I have to show you this. And look as the teacher again. I think we're logged in as the teacher over here. Let's see. Maybe not. And if we log in as the teacher, we can then go and modify the typing class and add a special menu item. And we'll add this uh, special game here. Make this bigger. And now let's press F10 to add it. And we can now play a network game that is very special. So we come here and this game asks us for a skill level. We'll hit five. And the object of the game is to destroy the snipes. So there's a nice little read up here. And I think it says when you're ready to play, just go ahead and press enter to start the game. Huh, what happened? So I think there's probably people still out there trying to figure out <laughs> how to go on a snipe hunt. Uh, anyway, uh, that's the running joke. I'll leave it at that, is not to spoil the rest of it. All right, back over here to sysop mode. And as we come in here, we can see some other options as well, including removing user IDs. There's this format log data for host, which I think is useful for uh, logging certain information. You can advance all of the students one grade level if you want. Uh, we have this one student here. Let's promote them to 13th grade. I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, press the insert key, then F10, and we can then promote that student. And they have been advanced to grade 13. Congratulations. We can also change some other things like the school login screen. We can make some workstation assignments. I think I'll go ahead and assign this to be workstation number one if we want to do that. And you can assign each station a station number. We can also change the menu escape code. So the way this works is if you hold down the Alt key and press these characters, you can actually escape to DOS. So I'll hold down the Alt key now and hit the E key. You see a flash, S, C, and now we're in DOS mode and we can do pretty much whatever we want. And to come back into the menuing system, we can press the G key and now we're back in again. Very cool. All right, what else? So you can control messages. Maybe you don't want to allow people to send messages in a class. Uh, you can also look at some system options like displaying a directory on drive H, we'll say, for example, and it'll show us that. Uh, you can copy files. You can back up the system to tape, start a remote host session. And you can also go and look at the various uh, network utilities. So as we come in here, we do get an error message about the help file missing. That's OK. Uh, but you can do things like look at session management and you can see different information about different users and which stations they're on and send them a message if you want or display user information. So this is at the Novell level as opposed to the IBM iClass level, but it's kind of neat. And we can do other things like uh, look at file management, uh, system configuration if you want to look at that as well as well as configuring options for the uh, login scripts, as well as whether or not you can limit the number of concurrent connections. Right now, we can have as many students log in as they want. Also, password requirements and other Novell level items that can be set, and these will be followed by uh, the iClass system. So once you set these, they will be go into effect. Cool. So you can also look at user information here as well including account restrictions, changing the user password, setting a custom login script, time restrictions, amongst other things, as well as volume restrictions, actually. So if you wanted to limit how much space the user could use, you could do that as well. So lots of really cool things here to explore. I won't go into all of them, but kind of neat. 
And another cool feature is you can actually show all of the online workstations so we can see that the teacher and sysop are logged in via those various connections that you see here. So that's a variety of the different system operator items. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Thank you, Virtual Chris. That was amazing. You did a wonderful job. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll ask my viewing audience a question. Would you like to see a walkthrough? If so, leave a comment below and we'll see what we can do there. Definitely subscribe to the channel. If you found this video useful or liked it, please do give it a thumbs up. If not, definitely consider sending me a strong message by pressing that thumbs down button twice. Otherwise, that's what we have for you today. Can't wait till see ya. Until next time. Until then, bye for now.